my name is Eric Blanc. I was a public school teacher in San Francisco, and I, for the last year, have been reporting and helping organize solidarity for the teacher strikes that have really spread all across the United States, starting in West Virginia and now in places like California. And I just wrote a book called Red State Revolt about the teacher strike wave. Yeah, in the United States for decades, but really in particular since the economic crisis of 2008, there's been a really regressive policy imposed by both the Democrats and the Republican parties against public education. And that's meant uh, austerity, uh, dramatic cuts to school budgets. It's meant privatization. So the schools now, public schools are getting replaced with uh, private schools and private control over public funds. Uh, real attacks on unions, so teachers unions have been put under attack all across the United States, laws against teachers unions, and just underfunding of the schools uh, across all of the country. And so in this context, um, both teachers have uh, trouble surviving, students have seen their uh, learning conditions just get way worse, and finally uh, organizers started to push in the direction of taking strike action to stop this and that in the United States is new. Uh, this is the most important strike wave we've seen in four decades. Uh, the strike has been abandoned for the most part by the labor movement in the United States which has focused uh, almost exclusively on just lobbying the Democratic Party and so what's exciting about these teacher strikes is that it really points the way forward for uh, the working class as a whole because it's brought back the strike as a weapon uh, to the working class movement in the United States. And it's done that because the teachers have won. They fought back starting in West Virginia and then spreading to Arizona, Oklahoma, all sorts of states where you might not have expected there to be uh, a big working class movement because these were so-called red states that voted for Trump in the presidential election. But I think what this shows is that whether it's in Democratic states or Republican states, the real divide is actually between workers and bosses. And there is a real deep sentiment against the establishment that has looked for a way to be uh, expressed. And so the strikes have given sentiment, uh, have given, the strikes have given that uh, anger an outlet. And in the same way we've seen Bernie Sanders uh, give that a political outlet as well. So it shows that working people in the United States are looking to fight back, um, and the strikes are really the best example we've seen of that happening and winning uh, on a local level. So the strikes have been overwhelmingly supported by the population as a whole. One of the reasons uh, for that is that the teachers have not just been fighting for their own demands, uh, when the teachers have gone on strike, it's not just been for better wages, but it's been for better wages, for more funding for schools, um, for more nurses and counselors in the schools, for anti-racist demands like rights for uh, black and Muslim students. And it was this type of um, really broad political working class vision that was able to bring in the community, bring in parents, bring in students. So it was clear that it wasn't just teachers fighting for themselves, but it was really teachers fighting on behalf of the working class as a whole. And so you saw in states that you would have never expected it. The support for the teachers is 80%, 85% of the population, including many Republicans. Uh, so it's a very dramatic uh, amount of support, and that's one of the reasons why they've been able to win so much. Yeah, it already has been um, put at the center, particularly by Bernie Sanders, uh, has made the question of public education a real center piece of his campaign. Um, and the reality is now the Democratic Party as a whole has had to at least uh, in words, make a shift to the left because of these teacher strikes. In the recent period, the Democratic Party has been really pushing almost identical politics as the Republicans when it comes to education. But because of the strikes now, all of the presidential candidates are at least pretending they're on the side of the teachers. And people like Bernie Sanders, he's called for a dramatic reinvestment in the school system, calling for a ban on charter schools, the privatization of schools, 
Um, and I think they will see now other candidates trying to pretend like they're Bernie or pretend like they're supporting the movement, which in some ways is a positive gain. I think that the teachers who went on strike realized that for them to win, it needed to be with the support of the public as a whole. That one of the things that we've seen in the history of the United States labor movement is that strikers have had a very hard time winning without significant amount of public support. So because of that, um, the radicals who led these teacher strikes really very consciously put at the fore that this was not just a fight for themselves as teachers, but had to be around the public service uh, for working people as a whole. And I think they were able to do that um, in part because public services have been so decimated in the United States that there really is a moment now where people are looking for um, a solution and the space is there for teachers to take the lead to say, look, you deserve uh, a great public education and we're here to make that happen for you. And so I think the lesson internationally is that we can't just, as workers, only fight for our own demands. We always need to raise the broader political questions. And I think the reason that doesn't always happen in the past in the United States, or maybe in other countries, is that unions uh, are oftentimes tied to uh, uh, institutional partner in the state. So instead of looking to ally with the rest of the working class, uh, they try to have a relatively narrow um, dialogue with aspects of a party or maybe an institution in the state. So I think we need to look towards the rest of our class as our ally, less than um, some of the people in power. Yeah, the number of strikes um, and workers on strike in the United States uh, just this last year was the highest uh, in decades. We had uh, 400,000 educators go on strike, which is by far the highest number in the history of the United States. So this is a really big development. We haven't seen this number of workers on strike in a very long time. And so it's exciting because I think that if we're going to be able to win and build real power and rebuild a labor movement, you can't do that without being able to use the weapon of the strike. And unfortunately, that weapon has been discarded, partly because uh, in the United States, it's very hard to organize. The legal system is very repressive. It's very anti-democratic. There's a lot of laws. Um, these strikes were, for the most part, illegal. Uh, the overwhelming majority of these strikes were had to break the law, and that's one of the reasons why you don't see them as much. But because the West Virginia strike broke the law and won, it inspired other people to do the same. So I think that in the United States now, there is a sense that the strike is back and working people need to rely on it if we're going to be able to beat back the billionaires. In the United States, the form that privatization has taken has meant that there are many education workers who are not unionized, who have no job security, and who are very precarious. Um, so it's one of the reasons why it's been hard to strike. And I think the response that these movements have given is that there's been a conscious effort to unite both the workers who are in unions and have more rights together with uh, really some of their more precarious uh, sisters and brothers. And that's not easy. It's easier um, for if you have rights and you're in a union to take that risk. But what we did see in some of these states um, is now that the workers who are unionized have been fighting back and been able to sort of bring in the other workers. Um, for workers who feel like they have fewer job protections, they've been able to lean on the power created by uh, the unions to basically be able to integrate themselves into that movement. Because on their own, it's very hard for them to win. But now that there's this bigger, broader movement, they've been able to go out on strike. They've been able to unionize. Um, we started to see unionizing of some of these precarious private education workers. Um, so I think that the lesson has to be we need to be able to unite and bring in the precarious workers into the you know, union movement as a whole.